In this episode on Kids Life Coaching with me, Monique Engelbrecht, I explore some of the many questions that parents have about children and bullying. Like, shouldn't the schools be doing more? Or why must my child learn the skills and just accept that it's the bully with the issues? Or what do I do if I sus- suspect my child is perhaps the bully or is being bullied, but he or she won't talk to me? Now, it's obviously important to first and foremost distinguish the difference between a bully and a rude and ill-mannered child. All right, if another child says something mean to your child, it's not exactly bullying. It's just a rude child who has absolutely no manners. But it becomes bullying when this other child comes back the next day and the next day and continues with these words that now it's turned into teasing. And now this child's actions are intentional. And this child or this bully is practicing some sort of power over your child. This is the very definition of bullying. You know, that ongoing intentional misuse of power in relationships, which is intended to cause uh, physical, social or psychological and emotional harm. So when your child complains about another child or incident at school, don't go Guns blazing like Terminator, ready for action. Speak to your child first. Try try and determine whether your child literally just experienced a negative incident with another rude child. Or is this persistent? Is, Is your child being harmed? Is this something like the fourth time your child is complaining about this other child? Then yes, explore the situation further. But nonetheless, with this said, you as a parent are never too protective over your child, especially when it comes to their well-being. Many parents are inclined to immediately go running to the schools and the bully's parents with a mission, you know, with this superhero to the rescue. Da, 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 da. It's normal, okay? You are doing your job as a parent to want to protect your child. And it's especially a normal reaction given all the stories that we hear more and more each day regarding bullying and what it can lead to if we leave it unattended. So just wait. Speak to your child first and then see exactly what is going on. What is the actual situation? But however, you know, when whether your child is being bullied or if they're dealing with a rude and ill-mannered child, the situation still has the potential to make your child feel worthless, perhaps like they deserved it. It can still mess up their day and their own picture of themselves. So it is important to, to make sure that your child also understands the difference between a bully and just a rude child. And it's important for them to have the necessary skills in order to safeguard themselves against the potential effects of that situation. You know, these these types of situations, they don't go away as you get older. I mean, let's face it, everyone listening right now is able to think of at least one bully or ill-mannered person in their life, right? Growing up is not like, Welcome to level two, where the difficult people have now disappeared. No, any <laughs> any higher level in a game gets more and more complicated. So if your child has the skills to safeguard themselves against these difficult people or children now already, they will be able to conquer the upcoming levels with ease. As a kid's life coach, I coach children to put these practical skills to use against the bullies. Children are coached to understand that a bully is basically just someone who is struggling with their own fears and their own insecurities inside. They have no power and feel this loss of control somewhere in their own life. So they need a target to use and abuse just to help themselves feel better. Now, yes, of course, it's not just your child who must learn the skills. 
I'm not saying that they must just accept this behavior and insecurities from the bully. It's not about accepting it, but it's about understanding and knowing how to deal with it, especially when no one is around, like a parent or teacher, because obviously that's when most bullying takes place. So yes, it's just as important for the bully to understand what they are going through and it's important for them to develop the correct social and emotional skills. They get coached too. They're also just children facing their own giants without the knowledge or training for their own battle. But in that moment, in that moment when your child is being bullied, there's no time to sit and play the blame game. Yo, but this child's parents, what are they doing? No wonder this child is a bully. This child this, and this child that. In that moment that your child is being bullied, that is the time your child can say, right, you know what? I have no control over what this bully chooses to do or say. I have no control over their experiences at home and what may be the reason for their bullying. But where I do have all the control is my thoughts, my behavior, my attitude. So let's tackle this. And I'd like to actually stop and add here that, you know, of course, the, the, the schools should be doing something and putting things in place to prevent the bullying. If you ask me, I think coaching kids should be compulsory in all schools so that all children get to learn the skills and the know-how of how to deal with bullies and how to deal with the situations that may be causing them to bully. You see, there are different role players when it comes to the prevention of bullying. And that includes parents, teachers, schools, children, the bystanders. But at the end of the day, if your child is a target and no one is around, what then? What do they do? If they can't call a teacher, if they can't phone a friend, they can't rely on the audience, can they choose the correct answer on their own? Can they get to a solution? So how exactly does your child tackle this bully? Well, let's face it, this is a topic with many branches and we could be talking for days and days. There are different circumstances and, and of course different outcomes, but the main foundation that I stick to in my coaching practice with children, teens and young students is the following. Firstly, confidence. Knowing and believing in your worth. And in the sessions, we work on ways to show confidence even when you feel so small against this bully. I coach children to have this picture of a, a shield which protects them from the things out there trying to get in their thoughts and attack their worth. Now, this shield is, is, is made up of all the things that contribute to their own confidence. So, of course, it will look very different for different children. Now, this all also ties in with assertiveness, knowing how to communicate in a way that people will listen to you. So your child isn't just going to say to the bully, stop it, stop it, please stop it, ma'am, please stop it. I mean, come on, that, that's helping no one. It may seem like your child is trying to stand up to the bully, but actually the bully is getting so much satisfaction out of this because this bully can see he or she is busy annoying the heck out of your child and this is what they want they want your child to react with anger irritation and hurt this is what gives them more power or at least the feeling of more power I'll take you back to the game analogy let's picture two people fighting in a game and you have your bars of health hovering over each player's head. Now, the more your child allows the bully to get into their thoughts and attack their worth, the quicker their health bar goes down. And the other player, the bully, his or her bar just stays green and full. So, to get that bully's bar to go from green to orange to red to game over, your child can stand up for themselves in a more effective way through assertive communication and confidence. 
you see, the bully might think they are in this battle for power and, oh, look at me, I'm powerful, I'm light. The attention's on me now. But actually, your child knows that they have all the power within them. Now, your child might still come home, even after successfully handling the situation with the bully, and they might still burst into tears or show irritation or lash out in some way at home. This can just be their way of venting. And parents, this is okay. It doesn't mean your child didn't know how to handle the bully or they're still struggling. It's just their way of venting. So take, for instance, think about your way of getting rid of all the overwhelming feelings you maybe have after a situation. I mean, are, are you all joyful and jolly after dealing with your inconsiderate boss? Are you smiling from ear to ear after getting in a fight with your partner? No. I know when I'm angry and I come out of a difficult confrontation, I cry. I cry like a baby and I let it all out. So whichever way your child chooses to get it all out and empty out the feelings from the situation, just assure them that it's okay to feel the way they are feeling and they can have their moment. You're there, and when they're ready to talk about it, you'll be there. And then when they do tell you what happened, you give them one big high five and hug and say, well done. Don't just immediately say, you know what, I'm going to the school first thing tomorrow, and I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. They will not upset my child like this. Because you know what? This may be the very last thing your child wants, and eventually they might stop sharing things with you. So as I said, first speak to your child and then determine if the situation needs your attention or not. If your child is physically harmed and things are really getting out of control, then for sure, there's always a time and place for parents to step in and say, you know what, enough is enough now. But just first see whether this is the case or not. So with regards to your child speaking to you about things, make sure they have at least one person they trust and are comfortable speaking to. So moms of teenage boys, sometimes that might not be you, but that's okay. At the end of the day, your child just needs a friend, a family member, a teacher, a someone that they trust and talk to so that firstly they don't bottle up things and and let the negative and the, the potential effects of the bullying fester inside and also so that someone else is aware of the situation and action can be taken if things do get worse now when your child does choose to open up sit back and just listen don't come with a response of, oh, that's just girls being catty, or yeah, boys will be boys. Ask your child, what happened next? What did you do? What, what do you think you'll do next time? What do you think will happen when you do that? Just encourage a solution-focused mindset. Don't downplay the situation, and also don't give the situation extra fuel. In my coaching practice, I coach children to train their brain to focus on a solution. So they learn to think, okay, this is now the situation I'm in. So what can I do about it? How can I move forward? My special interest in bullying really stems from my own experiences. Gosh, I've, I've had my fair share of bullying. And in all honesty, looking back, I could have handled things so much better. If I knew how to tackle the bullies, even the adult bullies that I faced, I would not have felt so lonely, so powerless. Struggle with confidence, struggle with boundaries because I was seeking acceptance. The list goes on. As an adult today, can you think back to a situation that happened in your childhood and how that had an impact on your choices, your personality? The things you do today, the way you do the things you do today. See, now this is what fuels my motivation to coach children. I don't want them looking back on life like we are now and thinking, gosh, you know, if I only 
did this or changed that or tried this. I wonder how things would have been. I wonder if it would have turned out differently and given me a different opportunity. We don't want this for our kids. We want our kids to believe in their own strength and have the confidence to use this against people who try and bring them down. They can start seeing this bully as just another level in the game of life. And because they have the skills to deal with it, they can overcome and become stronger and stronger as they move forward. So if you want your child to know how to empower themselves and how to be bullyproof, get in touch and enroll your child in a coaching program. It is tailor-made to suit the child's specific needs. Parents, you don't have to tackle this alone. You have support. Take that weight off of your shoulders. Your child has so much strength and my aim is to coach them to see this and use this. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and please make sure you keep following for more. Until next time, take care.